everyone and welcome back to Orms TV. My name is Jess and this is Videography for Beginners, the series where we introduce you to the fundamental techniques for shooting professional and cinematic video. In this first episode of the series, we are going to talk about everything to do with frame rates, what they are, their origins, and how to select the correct frame rate for the type of video that you want to produce. But before we dive right into the video, if you would like to learn more about photography, filmmaking, and the latest developments in camera gear, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell to stay up to date with all of our newest videos. We try to create educational videos like this on a regular basis, so make sure you give this video a like if you want us to keep it up. Now that that shameless self-promotion plug is out of the way, let's talk about frame rates. The term frame rate refers to the measurement of frames per second, or FPS, basically meaning how many images your camera captures per second. The science behind how these individual frames become a seamless video clip lies in the fact that the human brain can perceive 10 to 12 individual frames per second and still tell that each is a separate image. If you have any more frames than that, your brain actually blends the images together, creating the illusion of motion from what is actually just a series of static images played back sequentially at a specified speed. To understand more about frame rates and how they are used today, it is worth briefly touching on their history. Back in the day of silent films, frame rates were wildly inconsistent. Recording and playback at any rate between 14 to 26 frames per second was common due to the hand crank nature of historical filmmaking and projection methods. It was the introduction of sound to the film industry that caused frame rates to become standardized. In 1929, 24 frames per second became the international standard for film recording with sound. This frame rate kept the cost of film as low as possible while still preventing the fidelity of the audio track from being compromised. The number 24 was also easily divisible for editors quickly trying to calculate how many frames were equivalent to various fractions of a second when making edit adjustments. To this day, 24 frames per second remains the cinematic standard and there are countless cinematographers and film enthusiasts who will die on the hill of defending this frame rate as the only choice for cinema. I happen to be one of those people, but that is a topic for another video. If you have ever explored your camera's video settings, you may have run across two collections of frame rates under the terms NTSC and PAL. Let's talk about that quickly. It's the 1930s and television is now a thing. To eliminate flicker and conserve bandwidth, back then each frame of video was dissected into alternating upper and lower fields that were then interlaced to form a complete picture. Thus the creation of the now dreaded interlaced video format, which is largely outdated today. Broadcast also had to avoid intermodulation, the distortion caused by the electrical current powering the TV. This was done by setting the refresh rate to match the AC power. In the United States, that was 60 Hz, meaning that each field had to be displayed at a 60th of a second, thus resulting in a rate of 30 frames per second, or later on 29.97 frames per second, when the system of 59.94 fields per second was adopted as it was compatible with both black and white and color TV sets. Both of the aforementioned frame rates fall under the National Television System Committee, or NTSC, standard. Elsewhere in the world, including South Africa, the phase alternating line, or PAL, system is the standard, as the AC is 50 Hz, meaning that each of the alternating interlaced fields had to be displayed at a 50th of a second, and thus a frame rate of 25 frames per second. And that is why you will see that there are different frame rates available under the NTSC and PAL options in your camera's menu. By now you're probably saying, well, that is all kind of interesting, but will you just tell me what frame rate I should shoot at? So, without making it complicated, if you want your footage to look natural or like real life, 24 or 25 frames per second is perfect because it mimics the cadence that we are used to seeing. If you would like some silky smooth slow motion for the purposes of storytelling or achieving that Peter McKinnon B-roll aesthetic or simply smoothing out some slightly shaky handheld shots, you can shoot at a higher frame rate like 50, 60 or 120 frames per second and then conform it to a lower frame rate timeline in post. And finally, if you want that classic soap opera or reality TV look, you can shoot at 50 or 60 frames per second and use it as is. Finally, a few practical frame rate related things to be aware of before we wrap this video up. Firstly, on most cameras, you may only be able to shoot a higher frame rate such as 120 frames per second 
at a lower resolution such as 720p instead of 1080p. Make sure that you check this beforehand so you don't end up accidentally limiting yourself in terms of your maximum project resolution. Higher frame rate video files are also much bigger than lower frame rate video files. 50 frames per second contains literally double the number of images that 25 frames per second does. So just make sure that you have plenty of storage space available. Take it from somebody who filled up all of her SD cards only halfway through a wedding from shooting that sweet, sweet 60 frames per second B-roll. If you are shooting indoors, you might find that some lights and screens start flickering in your video clips. In order to eliminate this, you just need to shoot at a frame rate that matches the AC power. That means 25 or 50 frames per second in a 50 hertz environment and 30 or 60 in one where 60 hertz is present. It may take some experimentation to figure out which is present in the environment you're shooting in, but this is usually an overcomable annoyance, unless you are shooting in some kind of cinematic hellscape where the lights and the screens are different, in which case I feel very sorry for you. Finally, some cameras may ask you to format your memory cards when switching from NTSC to PAL or the other way around. So just make sure that you don't accidentally delete a whole bunch of your footage because that would suck. I see you, Sony a7 III, I see you. If you would like to dive deeper into all things frame rates, I highly recommend that you check out the extremely knowledgeable folks over at Filmmaker IQ, who have done two extraordinarily detailed videos on the topic. You can find the links to those videos in the description below. That is it for this episode of Videography for Beginners. I hope that you feel smarter after watching this video than you did before you clicked on it. As always, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below and we will get back to you ASAP. Until next time, cheers.